Do you remember Emilia Getty, the praying child? She lived in times of trouble, but she had many answers to her prayers to God. Let's find out more about someone else who grew up in her town and who knew her family well. Someone who would be very famous. He was the teacher at the school to which Emilia went. His name was Richard Cameron. He went to university at the age of 14 and when he finished he came back home to live with his family as the school teacher in the town. It was an important job in a small town. In those days schools were closely connected with the parish church and the teacher helped the minister. For a short while Richard also led the congregation in singing psalms in the church since the Scottish church never used organs or other instruments. At school, the younger children learned reading, writing and maths. Some of the older children learned Latin and other advanced subjects. But this was a time of great trouble in the church. The faithful ministers had been forced out of their churches by the government. They had to preach in houses and in the fields instead. At first there weren't many of these meetings in Fife, but more began to be held around the time that Richard began to teach. Soon it became one of the areas in Scotland where there were lots of meetings. Many were in the area around the town in which Richard lived. Thousands of people went, rich and poor, but many were arrested and punished just for going to them. Richard went to hear the faithful ministers preaching at the field meetings, together with many others. He had an important job, and it was even more noticeable to others that someone like Richard went to these meetings. It could cost him a lot, because the meetings were against the law, and the preachers were condemned by the government as traitors and rebels. Do you remember the young minister Robert Gillespie, who was arrested at a house meeting in the town where Amelia and Richard lived. This happened during these years. Richard became friends with Amelia's father and others who were faithful Christians. Perhaps you also remember John Wellwood, the persecuted preacher who loved to talk to Amelia about spiritual things. Richard listened to his earnest and direct preaching and he became firm friends with the young minister. It could be that it was Wellwood's preaching of the Gospel which was used in Richard Cameron's conversion to Christ. The local minister was shocked by Richard attending these meetings. He was not someone who stood out against the way the government were changing the church. He liked Richard and was very pleased with the work that he did. He tried to persuade him to stop going to the meetings. This didn't work, so he got several other ministers to speak to Richard, but he still would not change his mind. Richard must have known that he would get into trouble and could lose his job, but that wasn't the most important thing to him. He and his family had heard a message in the field meetings that they could not get elsewhere. They had heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the free promise of forgiveness of sins and eternal life through trusting in the Saviour alone. They could not abandon the meetings therefore, not even when there was severe persecution in Fife. Richard was waiting for the summons to appear in court, and it came. Richard and his family, together with many others in the town, were summoned to appear in court because they had stopped going to the parish church. They were charged with going to preaching meetings in the house of Amelia Geddes' father and for going to field meetings. They would probably find a lot of money for this. Richard had to give up his job and move with his family to Edinburgh. Then he was offered a job as a chaplain to a noble family who lived near the border with England. There were no children here to teach but he would still have been involved in teaching the Bible to those who lived in the house. He also led family worship because Sir William Scott was often elsewhere on important business. 
Richard wrote letters to his friend John Wellwood and had great encouragement from his replies. In one letter Wellwood wrote, You have the honour to be persecuted for righteousness' sake. But he told him to be careful. There may be several trials ahead. But he told him to trust in God. If you keep near him, all is well. God would never change, no matter if others did. God will never fail you, he said. He will be with you as long as you are with him. Richard needed that good advice because another test was coming and it wasn't going to be easy. The government were brutal and severe in their persecution, but they also thought of cunning ways to try to cause divisions among the ministers whom they had forced out of the church. Some ministers were told that they would be allowed back into the churches as long as they agreed to obey the government. Some felt the pressure and decided to accept. They were ministers who believed the right things according to the Bible. They weren't going to be forced to preach what was wrong. But they were being told by the government that there were things they weren't allowed to do. It was still a case of the government controlling the church, and that was not right. Only Christ is the head of the church, and he has said how his church should be ruled. It is wrong to allow governments to control the church, because Christ is its only king. People had a difficult choice. Was it right or wrong to listen to these ministers who had given in to the government? Had they been unfaithful to the Lord Jesus Christ? Richard Cameron thought deeply about this, and he decided that it would be wrong to listen to such ministers. The problem was that Sir William Scott and Lady Scott sometimes went to hear one of them. One day Richard had to go together with them to church. He walked along with them. What was Richard going to do? Would he go into the church? They got to the door and Richard said that he could not go in and then left. Next day he had to answer for what he had done. He explained why he believed it would be wrong to listen to such ministers, but his employers were not pleased and he was told that he could no longer be their chaplain. Once again, Richard had been prepared to lose his job rather than go against what he knew was right. Once more too, John Wellwood was a faithful friend. I am glad that the Lord helped you to be faithful to him in that family you were in, he said. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your steps. He also encouraged Richard to think that the Lord had something more in store for him, that he himself would be a preacher of the gospel in the fields. Richard went back to the borders to be a chaplain in a different place, but this time without any difficulty. It brought him closer to some of the main field preachers. Eventually, he was approved by them as an official preacher. He preached the gospel powerfully in the fields in many different parts of the south of Scotland. He loved to invite people to put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. One time he preached, But our Lord has come to your door. Will you take him or not? Will you take him home with you? It is a great wonder that anyone in Scotland is getting such an offer this day. But take him. He also felt it was important to warn people about going to listen to the ministers who had made an agreement with the government. Others didn't like this, even some of those who were preaching in the fields. They told Richard that he should stop. It was another difficult time for him, and it seemed best to go to Holland to see some of the faithful ministers who had been banished from Scotland by the government. They welcomed him and gave him good advice. When he came back to Scotland, he found that many of those who had been preaching in the fields 
were now finding it too dangerous. Only a few continued. So Cameron joined them. 3,000 people came to hear God's word preached the first time after his return. The next Lord's Day, even more people came to hear. Even though his life was in danger, Cameron kept on preaching. He was bold in making God's word known. He preached comfort and encouragement tenderly, as well as speaking about the way that God was being denied and disobeyed in the country. Sometimes people listened with tears in their eyes. He decided it was important to make a public stand against what the government were doing. So he and his friends rode into a town and read out a declaration against the king, which they then nailed to the mark of cross. This was very bold. Some people said it was too bold. It was only going to enrage the government further. But Cameron was prepared for anything that would happen. He kept preaching, even though the government troops were in hot pursuit. Then one day, 120 government dragoons caught up with Cameron and 62 of his followers. Cameron and his friends got ready to defend themselves because they knew they would not be treated well. Cameron prayed, Lord, spare the green and take the ripe. He was ready to die. He was ripe for heaven. He and the others fought valiantly, but they were overcome and most were killed. Richard Cameron was among them. The Bible tells us that the righteous is as bold as a lion. Richard Cameron was bold. That's why he was called the Lion of the Covenant. He was fearless in the trials he faced. You might not face the same kinds of difficult choices. But we all face the choice of serving the Lord Jesus. And if we follow and serve him, we must be prepared to suffer. Others will try to get us to change our minds, even a little bit, in order to please them. Remember how Moses had to make up his mind, growing up in Pharaoh's palace. Would he suffer with God's people, or would he sin? Don't be tempted to choose sin rather than Christ. It is never right to sin and disobey Christ, no matter what the consequences may be. Others may mock or make life difficult for us, but it is only for a very short time compared to eternity. Just like Richard Cameron, Moses looked to an eternal reward. Trusting in the Lord Jesus for help, you will be able to do that too.